Chapel Hill, the home of number one ranked North Carolina. A crowd of more than 22,000 is on hand to watch the Tar Heels take on the Maryland Terrapin. The two senior coaches in the ACC, a matchup where Dean leads lefty 26-7, but that's not the whole story. Some of those losses have been oh so close, like 83 in Carmichael. Let's reset the stage for you. It's North Carolina 72, Maryland 71. The Terps with the basketball, five seconds left. Adkins to Chuck Drizel. Drizel drives the baseline, it's blocked. Ball's out of bounds, there's no time left on the clock. That was 1983. Two years ago, it wasn't that close. The great Michael Jordan finished off the College Park encounter with a 74-62 Carolina win. Then 85, Carolina's Curtis Hunter applied the final nail in the coffin as the Tar Heels scored six straight points to come from behind and steal another victory from the upset-minded Terrapins. Earlier this year in College Park, Maryland was playing superbly at home and it looked like they had it in the bag, leading by nine with 11 minutes to go. But things started to unravel and the Tar Heels staged another brilliant comeback for a 71-67 victory. Tonight, Carolina will try to maintain its dominance while Maryland goes for the upset, live from the Smith Center. Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions present exclusive live coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference basketball. Tonight, live from the Dean Smith Student Activity Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, the Maryland Terrapins take on the University of North Carolina Tar Heels. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Piedmont Airlines, NCNB, the Jefferson Pilot Companies, Natural Light, South Carolina National, Subaru, Food Lion, Gillette, and by Central Fidelity. Maryland and North Carolina from the Smith Center in Chapel Hill. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick along with Dan Bonner, and it's great to have you with us for Atlantic Coast Conference basketball tonight. And Dan, the pressure is really on Maryland. They've had a disappointing season. They're playing the number one team in the country in their building. And a lot of people think they have to win this ball game realistically to get an NCAA bid. That's what the Maryland people have said, Mike. Maryland, of course, has played a very difficult schedule, but you don't get any credit for the degree of difficulty of your schedule if you lose a lot of games, and that's what Maryland, unfortunately, has done. They've got a tough schedule remaining. They've got uh, Georgia Tech and Virginia coming up. They really feel like they've got to win most of those games, so tonight is extremely important for the Terrapins. Well, one good sign for Maryland fans, the Terps are playing extremely well before they had the three players suspended for the curfew violation. That, people talk about chemistry, Mike, and it's a cliche, but it's a cliche because it's really true. Maryland was playing very well. They'd finally gotten the combination they were comfortable with. They played well the other night against Maryland Eastern Shore, but Maryland Eastern Shore is not exactly the University of North Carolina, so it'll be interesting to see if the Terps can put it back together. When you look at North Carolina, here's a team that's number one in the conference, number one in the country, and yet they can't afford to lose another game in this conference. No, this is a difficult task for North Carolina. They're obviously in a very, very strong league, battling Duke for the number one spot in the conference, battling Duke for the number one spot in the country. They've got to go to North Carolina State and to Duke as well, so they can't afford to lose this one either. All right, in the first meeting between these two teams, Maryland seemingly had a great game plan, played very well, could have won, some people say should have won, yet they lost. Is that going to have any psychological factor in this game for either team? I don't know whether it will or not, Mike. Maryland ought to believe that they can play with North Carolina. We've heard some of the Terrapin players say they thought maybe it'd be easier to play here than in Carmichael. We'll see about that. North Carolina, I don't think you can play them twice with the same game plan, so it ought to be interesting. Should be a great one. Maryland and North Carolina coming up from Chapel Hill, and we'll be back with more after this from Natural Light. The game plan is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Dan Bonner in that first meeting between Maryland and North Carolina up in College Park. Maryland did everything it needed to win for about 35 minutes. The last five, it didn't work. What do they have to do tonight? Well, one thing, Mike, that they've got to do is they've got to play well for 40 minutes. You hear a lot of coaches 
at the end of a game say, well, I'm pleased that we that we won the game, but we didn't play well. You never hear anybody say that when they play beat North Carolina. So first yeah. off, Maryland's got to play an outstanding game. They have to handle North Carolina's pressure, and I think they have to hit the offensive board. All right, how about North Carolina? They have done everything superbly all year long. They sure have. Brad Doherty, has, in particular, has played very well. I think they need to have a good game from their inside people. The one point where they could really get burned is if Maryland is able to do a fine job on the offensive board. All right, that's the way we see it in the pregame. We'll check back on the uh, game plan at halftime. And the game plan has been brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. We'll be back with the starting lineups for Maryland against North Carolina right after this. The American work ethic is when what you do isn't a job. It's a commitment. It's working by a standard, not by a clock. It's when the toughest standards are your own. The work ethic built a nation, and today it's building an airline. Last year, Piedmont gained passengers 10 times faster than the largest airline in the country, and our service record was ranked number one. The work ethic. It's alive and well at Piedmont Airlines. You always heard the one you love. People have a love-hate relationship with their cars. They love them, but they don't always treat them right. Yet amazingly, over 90% of all Subarus registered since 1974 are still on the road. Now imagine how much longer they would last if people didn't love them so much. Test drive a new 1986 Subaru at your local dealer today. Hammer will show how fast you can relieve sore throat pain. My sore throat feels very red and, and hot. Will you try chloroseptic? Sure. Now watch the timer. Mm. Oh, that's nice. That works really good. With doctor-recommended chloroseptic, relief is just seconds away. We're at the Smith Center in Chapel Hill, Maryland, getting ready to go against North Carolina. Mike Patrick and Dan Bonner with you. Glad you could join us tonight for what should be a great basketball game. And to get the starting lineups, let's go to the public address announcer, Kearney Andrews. Good evening, and welcome to the Dean E. Smith Student Activity Center at the University of North Carolina. Tonight, the Tar Heels host the Terrapins of the University of Maryland. Here are the starters for tonight's game. At forward for the University of Maryland, number 33, Derek Lewis. At forward for North Carolina, number 24, Joe Wolfe. For Maryland at forward, number 34, Lynn Bias. And for Carolina, number 25, Steve Hale. At center for Maryland, number 32, Terry Long. At center for North Carolina, number 42, Brad Doherty. At guard for Maryland, number three, Keith Gatlin. At guard for Carolina, number 14, Jeff Lebo. For the Terrapins at guard, number 12, Jeff Baxter. And for the Tar Heels, number 30, Kenny Smith. The head coach for the Terrapins is Charles G. Lefty Drizel. The head coach for the Tar Heels, Dean Smith. There are the officials tonight, Hank Nichols, heading the crew with John Moreau and Tim Higgins. And as you saw in the starting lineup, Dean Smith is going to go with his smaller lineup, uh, virtually a three-guard lineup with Hale moving to four. I think if you're the University of Maryland, you have to think that that's going to mean North Carolina is really going to come after you with some pressure. Get a look at the matchups here. It'll be interesting to see. Steve Hale is a very good defensive player. Uh, we've got the uh, bias and Wolf 
get matched up there. But I'm just wondering if maybe Steve Hale won't match up a bit with Len Bias. So the guard, the guard play is going to be very important tonight. Gatlin, uh, first assist that he gets tonight will break the all-time Maryland record. North Carolina has done obviously a very good job in the series, but those series records don't mean very much. Don't mean anything right now. Of course, up in College Park, North Carolina won it coming from behind. They were down nine with 11 minutes to go, and they won it by four. Bias with his party in the center circle, and it's Hale for North Carolina. This is Kenny Smith. We're trying to set the players for you. In case you're not already familiar with them. Maryland starts in the man-to-man -man defense. Hey. Hail to Kenny Smith, guarded by Gap. You can see a matchup problem for Maryland. Derek Lewis has to go against Steve Hale. Guardy, jump shot won't go. Lewis with a rebound. Lewis and Len Bias tied for the rebounding lead on the Maryland team. Darty, the leading rebounder for Carolina. This is Keith Gatlin, who will break the all-time career assist record with his first assist. And the loose ball ahead to Hale. Goes in against Baxter and scores. Carolina takes the lead. Mike, North Carolina shoots an extremely high percentage from the floor, and one of the reasons is that their defense creates shots like that. Right now, they are shooting as a team, 57.8%. If they can hold that to the end of the year, that would be number one all time for a season. This is Baxter against Lebo, a matchup that worked very, very well up in College Park. And Bias with a rebound and the follow. Lewis got a hand on it, but Hale with a loose ball. Hale's matched up against Bias. He didn't block him out the first time, but he went right to him and got him the second time. Guardy roll against Long, had it partially blocked, but there's going to be a foul inside. Terry Long slaps at the basketball. Maryland's strength is not their center position, either offensively or defensively, and North Carolina is going right after Terry Long. Brad Doherty has a, a pretty good size advantage in there. Doherty's playing very well, so it's a good idea to go to him, and Carolina's done it early. Doherty goes to the free throw line. The young man, the senior, listed at 6'11 and 3 quarters. One of the few Carolina players who was not a terrific free throw shooter, only hitting 69.5% this year. He may be the only guy in the country who's three quarters. That's right. You know, really, 6'11, six, six, 7 feet. What's the and everybody quarters? questions that measurement, too. <laughs> Here's the full court press with a 3 0 North Carolina lead. They get it across to Lewis. Smith trying to deny the Gatlin the basketball. They don't want Gatlin to have it in his hand. Bias, the long strip as he went up, and the foul will go against Carolina. And it's going to be on Joe Wolf for reaching in. Good aggressive move inside by Terry Long. North Carolina is matching Steve Hale up against Len Bias, but it's obvious that as Bias comes off those low screens, Wolf and Doherty are trying to give help. Good job by Maryland to occupy Wolf and Doherty on that occasion. Long, the junior out of Glen Allen, Virginia, is also not a good free throw shooter. Not good, as good as Doherty, 59%, although he's got a nice rotation on the ball. Got a roll on that. Maryland on the boards for the first time. 18-23 to go in the first half. It's Carolina 3-1. to one. Long has to be a factor for this basketball team as the center. They don't expect him to score, but he's got a rebound and play defense. Now here's Maryland on the made free throws. They're trying to full court zone press. Here's Lebo had such a great game in the first meeting. Nine out of ten from the floor. He's guarded by Baxter. Inside Wolf got away from Bias. Long bothered him though, and Lewis with a rebound. Good ball movement by Carolina. Good defense by the Turk. Gatlin goes baseline, hit, partially blocked, the rebound goes to Long, blocked by Doherty. Long thought he had an easy two there, but Doherty had other ideas. And he Smith from outside. Rimmed out on him, Lewis with a rebound, and he is fouled by Steve Hale. Maryland doing an excellent job on the boards here early. Maryland in the person of Derek Lewis. I don't think that anybody else <laughs> has a defensive rebound, but Lewis, tough shot by Kenny Smith. Lewis in good position to get that rebound. Tony Massenberg will check in for the first time, and Terry Long will come out to go to the Maryland bench. Massenberg, a freshman, 6'8", 215 from Sussex, Virginia. This is Baxter working on Lebo. Now Baxter, if they try to double-team wide open, gets it to Bias free for his shot and got it. Lenny Bias, the conference's leading scorer, puts Maryland on top for the first time, 4-3. And Doherty lost it, safe. 
Hale keeps it in play. Kenny Smith picks up by Campbell. Off to Hale. Back to Dory. Now you don't see passing like that very often, do you? No, you sure don't, Mike. Maryland was disorganized on defense to start. Lenny Bias thought they were still in the press. I don't think anybody else did, and Carolina just never let them get organized with that good ball movement. Bias is being guarded by Hale. A lot of pushing and shoving in there, but Bias with a big height advantage. This is Baxter Lowe. Lewis. Bias has a height advantage on Hale, but it's unlikely that Doherty and Wolf will be drawn away from the basket by Massinger and Lewis, so they'll be in to help out, help out on against Lenny Bias. Shot clock is at seven, and Baxter has to force a shot. Lebo's done great defensive job against Baxter on the two times he's been isolated on him. Hale back to Wolf, 16 foot. Carolina 7, Maryland 4. Lefty Drizel up off the bench telling his troops to settle down. Gatlin against Smith. Gets it to Bias. Bias way over Hale. Hale fouled him on the arm. That will be number two on Steve Hale. Uh, three minutes and 55 seconds of this ball game. This is going to be a very tough play for Steve Hale to guard. You notice Lenny Bias in good position. Wolf thought about coming to help but had to go because Bias was just a little too far away from the basket for him to come and help out. Bias can make that shot. Well, you almost wonder why Hale bothered to go up where he fouled him was on the elbow. That's how high Bias can get over. Lenny Bias has hit 13 straight free throws and is an 85% shooter. He just does it all. Now with Warren Martin in the game and Jeff Lebo out, we'll get a different kind of look from North Carolina defensively. 7-5, and now 7-6. Right right Bias has four, and Maryland's back within one. And here's Maryland. They're trying to press again. Maryland is also trying to drop back into a man-to-man -man after they press full court. Warren Martin at the high post. Maryland has a big lineup in there now. Finally gets rid of it to Wolf. Kenny Smith with the shot inside. Carolina leads by three at 9-6. First two points for Kenny Smith. Here comes the traps again. Baxter, Tobias over Warren Martin. Put an extra arc on it and got it. We talk Six about, for plenty bias. Talk about handling the pressure, Mike. Usually if you can get by that first double team, you with some good passing, you can get an open shot. Maryland's made him so far. Massenburg really working hard inside trying to stay with Doherty. And Doherty beat him that time. Lois blocked the shot. Doherty got it back. Shot too strong, but it's kicked in by Wolf. Good hustle on the boards by North Carolina, created by Brad Doherty's good positioning inside. 11-8, North Carolina. Wolf in with four points right now. Bias now being guarded by Martin, so he's seen a different defensive look. Gatlin wide open, short hops the pass and buried. Maryland shot well early. Kenny Smith beating the pressure to Hale. Back to After a made basket, it is hardly a fast break, but they run this better than anybody. North Carolina stays after you all the time. Maryland relaxed a little bit because it was after a basket, nonchalanted it back up the court. North Carolina made him pay for it. Great pass to end that off by Steve Hale. Wolf is out of the ball game and in for the first time. Steve Bucknall, the freshman from London, and here comes Curtis Hunter. Will give Hale a rest, who has two personals. 14.42 to go, first half. Carolina by three. And Kenny Smith, the all-time free throw percentage leader in Carolina history, will go to the line. Won't go, and Bias with the rebound. Very unusual to see Kenny Smith miss free throws against Clemson. He missed three in a row. One of those mental things, Mike, even though he's a tremendous free throw shooter, if there's a little doubt. Bias! Got the bucket and draws the foul. What a job by Bias. Split Martin and Doherty. Bias can do so many things. Martin, with his size, can guard Bias inside, but Bias uses his quickness to get around him on the outside. Brad Doherty tries to come and help, but Bias makes a great move to avoid the charge. North Carolina obviously going to experiment with a couple different ways to stop Len Bias. They have not been successful yet. Bias, who averages 22 and a half points a game, already has eight, make it nine, and we're tied at 13. 
There's a timeout on the court. 14-27 to go in the half. North Carolina 13 and Maryland 13. And we'll be back from Chapel Hill after this from Natural Life. Charlie here asked for a secret fish recipe. I told him to start by putting some natural light on ice. It's severe with the taste for food. Then I told him a fish for eating is best caught with a cross-eyed crawfish, only where the water's wet. Then I told him the fish had to swallow it, hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> and can't tell me if he didn't. Yeah, all natural, less filling. It's natural light from Anheuser-Busch. <laughs> have a natural, Charlie. Didn't believe it for a minute. <laughs> I had you hooked for a good 59 seconds, though. <laughs> A ranger never takes the easy way out. You're reaching deep inside you for things you never know. Go! That's why getting into the rangers is tough and the training is tough. Be all that you can be. So it makes me feel like I'm part of something really special. Be all that you can be. And I'm not the only one. Find your future in the army. This year, you'll apply your brakes over 50,000 times. And the more you stop, the more you'll need Midas. Because we back every brake repair we do with a nationwide guarantee on brake shoes and pads. If they should ever wear out, Midas will replace them free at over 1,400 locations for as long as you own your car. With such a good guarantee, why would you stop anyplace else? Trust the Midas Touch. It's 13 all with 14.27 to go in the first half. Maryland now showing you a different kind of pressure, man-to-man -man on the full court level. Gatlin just trying to pressure the ball up the court. This is Lebo with the basketball to Doherty. Curtis Hunter is in there, along with Bucknall and Warren Martin. This is Doherty in the lane. Three for a jumper, way short on that one. And hustling out there is Bucknall to get the rebound. It's funny looking play, Mike. Nobody was in front of Brad Doherty. Nobody came to block him out. The ball bounced him. Darty's jump hook got the roll on that one over Speedy Jones, who's in for the first time. Five points for Darty. He and Bias, the two most prolific scorers in the ACC this year. Bias to John Johnson, the freshman who lost it, but Speedy Jones got it back. Bucknall very nearly got that one, Mike. I don't think Speedy Jones has a nerve in his body. I've never seen the guy <laughs> flinch. Jones has the ball now. Back to Len Bias. Moving on. Martin baseline jumper won't go. Johnson with a rebound. Put it up inside the trees. How about that for the young That's freshman really guard? aggressive play. I was thinking there's no way he's going to be able to get that off, but he got it up over everybody. Uh, he was the only one who wasn't thinking that way. 15 all. 13-16. Go. They get it into 30. He is fouled by Massenburg. Massenburg just reached out and got a big couple of hands full on the way by. Massenburg got picked off inside, and he tried to come and get to Doherty, and as he did, he obviously was on Doherty's back. Doherty, Lebo, and Hunter are out. Let's see who checks in. Thompson, Hale, and Wolf. So Dean Smith, who can go oh so deep on that bench. Now the officials are going to stop playing. Well, Lenny Bias, that's a pretty smart move by Lenny Bias. He went to the official, I think, to ask a question, but his, he really wasn't trying to find anything out. He was trying to stop the game so Maryland could get organized with all those subs. You don't get to be an All-American for nothing. We caught 15 with 13.09 to go. Hale tried to get it in, taken away by Speedy Jones. A very rare turnover for Steve Hale. That gave Maryland time to organize their zone defense, and they stole the ball. John Johnson, the freshman out of Tennessee, takes Hale to the baseline, banked it up off the side of the backboard. Here comes Smith. Bucknall passed up a wide open shot. Good ball movement. They do it better than anybody in the country. Thompson's jumper won't go. Wolf offensive rebound. Follow won't go. Tip won't go. Rebound Speedy Jones. Now Derek Lewis is not in there for Maryland, and he is the big rebounder on this club along with Bias. Terry Long is back in. And Gatlin, that half jump, half set shot, puts Maryland on top. 17-15. Four for the junior from Grimesland, North Carolina. And now the crowd wants back in it. This is Wolf, guarded by Bias. Back door to Hale. They burn John Johnson. 
Maryland's trying very hard to play some aggressive man-to-man -man defense, Mike, but nobody was in the middle helping out. Not only does North Carolina move the ball well, Mike, they move themselves very well. This is Bias, who's had a big first half already. The game tied in 17. Nice fake by Bias. Got his man in the air and then hit the jump shot. 11 for Lenny Bias, the senior from Landover, and he's given Maryland a two-point lead. Left to Giselle's obviously into the game. That's three people now North Carolina's tried on Len Bias. We'll have to see if maybe that doesn't wear him down toward the end of the game. But so far, he's been successful. Doesn't wear down very well, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Wolf. what you're going to do to guard that. That's just a very nice soft shot with the left hand. Again, good movement and another great pass. Long is back helping on the press. This is John Johnson. Maryland's hit seven out of its last ten after missing one of making only one of six. Gatlin didn't get the roll. Rebound a roll. The guards have been shooting more for Maryland the last couple of ball games, and it's really worked for them because they can shoot. Wolf to give it to the for Joe Wolf, big first half, averages nine and a half points a game. And Wolf's ability to shoot that outside jumper, Mike, has improved so much from last year to this year that that's a big factor for North Carolina. This is Johnson, gets it back to Gatlin. Speedy Jones, almost lost it. Throws it away. Kenny Smith against John Johnson. Johnson cut him off and he'll get the foul. Good foul by John Johnson. It could have been called an intentional foul if he had been more flagrant about it. But here he stops the basket without really having much chance at the ball. And it's just going to be underneath out of bounds for North Carolina. Good play by John Johnson. Timeout. And we've got a timeout right now with 10 minutes and 27 seconds to go in the first half. Our score from Chapel Hill is North Carolina 21, Maryland 19. Back after this. We've talked about North Carolina's moving the ball very effectively, but effective ball movement is the result not only of good passing, but of good movement without the ball by the other players, as Steve Hale demonstrated there. Excellent cut. Carolina with a two-point lead and the basketball. 10-26 to go first half. Warren Martin is in there. Here comes the alley-oop. The ball's loose. Martin has it. And Warren Martin gets his first field goal. Maryland was in the 2-3 zone. North Carolina went up over top. Warren Martin did a nice job not bringing the ball down. Baxter now running the offense. Gatlin on the bench for a brief. This is John Johnson, good penetrator. He won't get the basket, but they're going to get Kenny Smith with a reach-in foul, and that's his first. Mike, Maryland has done an excellent job offensively thus far, spreading the court, forcing North Carolina to commit to that trap before they really start into their attack. And with the court spread very wide, they've created some good passing lanes for themselves against the trapping pressure. And Dan, they've switched the foul. Instead of Kenny Smith, they've given it to Steve Hale, and that is three on Steve Hale here in the first 10 minutes of the first half. So he'll sit down, and Lebo and Kenny Smith will be the guards. Kevin Karen. Madden is in there. Here's the steal. Can Baxter get it back? He does. Good play by Baxter. North Carolina trapping out of the 2-3 zone. Now Maryland has a man advantage. A 5 on 4 advantage right here. They can't do anything with it. John Johnson, the freshman down the lane, had it taken away. Lebo got it ahead to Kenny Smith. Baxter waiting. Lebo, look out for this. It was short. Got his own rebound. Dumped it off to Doherty. Mike, Maryland has given North Carolina too many easy opportunities. Well, that's about the third basket that North Carolina's had off a missed shot when nobody's blocked out the shooter. 25-19. The lead is up to six. Very important for Maryland to stay patient. North Carolina making this run with Len Bias on the bench. Bias and Gatlin are out of there. Gatlin is set to come back in. There is almost no offensive threat out there right now. They get it to Lewis, and the crowd is really fired up. Shot clock is down to 10 seconds. Tremendous defensive effort. This is Lewis out of his range. Missed the shot and long, knocked it out of bounds. It's out to Carolina. Great. And lefty Brazil has bias up, and he and Gatlin will be coming back. Very good point you made, Mike, with that lineup left he had in there. There was very little offensive firepower. Maryland forced into a long shot that was out of the range of Derek Lewis. Eight minutes, 50 seconds to go. First half, 25-19. The Terps have turned it over three times, and it's cost them six points in the process. 
Alex staying in the man-to-man -man defense. Warren Martin putting the ball on the floor. Now he has to pick it up. Five seconds, yes. Great defense by Terry Long, who was all over Warren Martin. And Dean Smith is up saying that was a fast five, wasn't it? Well, Warren Martin, it just... He moves so slowly, or ponderously, I guess is the right word. It just looks like it takes that long. That's right. Gatlin had it knocked away by Lebo. And Lewis is waiting for him to shoot so he can go for the block, and he got it. And Gatlin was out of bounds. Boy, you could see it in Lewis's eyes, just saying, go ahead and shoot. I don't think Lebo was really as aware of Derek Lewis as he was of Gatlin. He was right. trying to get across to the other side. Bad pass by Gatlin, just a little bit of a lazy play. Now watch Lebo as he goes down the court here. You can see Gatlin on one side, and that's who he was conscious of. He tried to go underneath the basket to protect himself from Gatlin, and Lewis caught it. You can almost see Derek Lewis smile, <laughs> knowing he had a he had a block coming. Then Keith Gatlin tried to sneak back in bounds, hope nobody saw him and get that ball. Wolf gets it off to Lebo against Baxter. He dumps it. Second time in a row, Lebo has gone right into the lane and handed it to Dorn. Penetration draws the defense, Mike. There's nobody left to help out. Again, another very easy opportunity for North Carolina. That's nine points for Doherty, and it's an eight-point Carolina lead. 7.55 to go in the first half. It's 27-19. At the conclusion of our game tonight, stay with us. We'll be choosing a player from each team as the Holly Farms Players of the Game. Lefty Drizel talking to his ball club. They're down by eight, 27 to 19, and Carolina has run off 10 straight points. I guess when Maryland took the lead, it upset them. That's very possible, Mike. North Carolina has been getting their points the easy way. They've been very close to the basket, a lot of dunks and layups. As we said, as we have said, North Carolina's had a lot of easy opportunities. Maryland's having to work very hard for theirs. And reflected in the shooting statistics, Carolina 13 of 23, Maryland 7 of 16 here in the first half. Bias and Gatlin are back good in. Good trap, good trap. They get it to Lewis, just sort of pushed it up out of the lane and missed the shot. Well, again, Maryland got out of the trap, a good move by Bias. Lewis had an easy shot and he missed it. Bucknall couldn't hit his shot. And Gatlin comes back to Maryland. The Turks really need a basket here. Maryland has not handled the North Carolina pressure well the last couple of times down. Lewis trapped inside, and at least he drew the foul from Joe Wolf. That'll be number two on Wolf. Carolina fans didn't like it. Lewis showing a great deal of aggressiveness inside. Good pass by Gatlin. Even though Wolf comes to help, Lewis goes aggressively to the basket. North Carolina complaining that possibly Lewis jumped back into Joe Wolf. I think Lewis may have gotten away with one on that because Wolf just uh, tried to stand his ground. Maryland as a team has hit all five free throws, and Lewis now makes it six straight to the Turks. One shot! So they've had uh, six of their 20 points have come from the free throw line here in the first half, and that's the first point from the sophomore from Temple Hills, Maryland. Give him two, and that broke the drought. Carolina now up by six, 27, 21. Bucknall to Smith. It's a three-on-two situation. Bucknall for the jam. That's how you handle a press, Mike. Maryland came out in the press. North Carolina got the ball to Kenny Smith in the middle, and I don't know that there's a better player in the country running the break. Gatlin to Bias, who gave it off to Derek Lewis. A very unselfish play by Len Bias, who had about a six-foot shot but thought Lewis might have had a better one, and he got the foul. <laughs> Yeah, I think a dunk is better than a six-foot shot, even if it's Bias shooting the ball. Great pass inside to Lewis. In fact, it surprised him, so it was a good catch, and he got fouled by Bucknall. That's one on Bucknall, and Lewis will go to the line trying for a three-point play. Once again, Mike, Maryland has shown that when they can handle the North Carolina pressure, that they can get a good opportunity at the basket. Their problem has been they've turned it over so much. Lewis has five, and it's 29-24, with seven minutes exactly to go in the first half from the Smith Center in Chapel Hill. Maryland's got to tighten up defensively and keep North Carolina further away from the basket than they have so far. They've got some easy one inside. That's because it's such a great passing team. Great passing and great movement. You just sit and watch North Carolina. They cut with some authority through them. Here's Wolf for that left-handed jump hook. Got another one, 31-24. Joe Wolf is in with 10 already. Big guys who can shoot with either hand inside, Mike, are so very much more effective. Here's Bias guarded by Wolf. Gets it back from Gatlin. Bias is 
been relatively quiet the last couple of minutes. Lewis made a good catch of a tough pass and then fired one up off the back of the rim. Made a good catch, Mike, but he hurried the shot. That wasn't a very good opportunity. Danny Smith to Wolf. Missed that one, and Lewis with another rebound. Lewis done a great job on the boards in the first half. Four rebounds so far. 31-24, the march in seventh with 5.51 to go. Here's Baxter isolated on the lead ball again. Terry Long couldn't hold the pass. Maryland continues to try to attack inside, Mike, and that's a good idea. You try to put some pressure on those big guys, particularly Brad Doherty inside. Maybe get him in foul trouble, but thus far, North Carolina's inside defense has responded very well. Long will come out for Maryland. Massenburg is back in. For Carolina, it's Hobson, Lebo, Smith, and now Kevin Madden in there, along with Doherty, and Doherty and Lewis pushing each other, and they're going to call the foul on Derek Lewis for holding. It's not a bad idea, probably, to grab a hold of Brad Doherty as he goes through the lane. The problem for Derek Lewis is you can't do it out there at the top of the key when everybody can see you. Smith will be the trigger man with 5.37 to go in the half. Into Doherty. Kenny. Doherty threw that one away and got a, got a break when it went right to Kenny Smith. Lewis with another block and Doherty with a follow. Good break for Carolina on that one. It's a good break created by some aggressive play though, Mike. That drive by Kenny Smith forced Lewis to come over to help out, so nobody was there to keep Doherty off the floor. 33-24, Baxter on the drive against Lebo. Missed the shot and boy, was that ripped off of there by Matt. Doherty wants the alley-oop. They can't get it to him. And Lebo misses out of the corner. The rebound to Massenbury. This is Baxter. Racehorse basketball, and Baxter is going to bring it out for a minute. I think Maryland needs to be more patient offensively. Again, they try to force him inside. Lebo took it away on the pass from Gatlin. Not a good pass that time. Carolina can get its lead into double figures with a bucket here. Bias knocked it away from Doherty. And they're going to call Bias, and all oh, lefty is stomping. Bias coming over the back, and the officials again, Mike, they call what looks like a foul, and normally that's for that play is going to be called a foul. Lefty showed some good quickness getting from his chair down to the baseline. Well, he did. He made the, he made the first aisle in about 1.2 seconds. And now there is not going to be, it is not a shooting foul, they're saying. It is uh, not in the one-on-one -on -one situation. You have only the sixth team foul against Maryland. Brad Doherty just walked to the line as if he's going to get the shot. Officials though right on top of it. Doesn't hurt to try. 33-24, nine-point lead. Lebo down the lane. Gatlin just took it away from him. On, oh, he stepped out of bounds, Mike. Good play by Gatlin. Fortunate play because Lebo had him beaten down the middle of the lane there, but he got it cleanly, but he stepped on the line as he tried to turn and go up court. Watch his cut by Lebo. Great cut. Gatlin, though, doesn't give up defensively. Tim Higgins right there on top of the play making the call. Lebo will feed it in with 4.29 to go in the half. That's a telling statistic right there. North Carolina with this second chance. Curtis Hunter in the ball game for the first time. He's number 43. Doherty's got to get rid of it. Threw it to Lebo, and he couldn't save it. Backcourt violation, and the ball will go over to Maryland. Good play by Lebo to get his hands on that ball. Mike, even though he knew it was going to be a backcourt violation, it's much better to have the violation called than to give up on the ball and have your opponent get it and be driving down for a layup. Third turnover against Carolina. Maryland has committed six here in the first half. Gatlin is guarded by Hunter. This is Massenburg. Driving the baseline, had it blocked by Popson, and they'll call Popson for the foul. I think the foul's probably going to be against Kevin Madden. That's Popson. Popson coming over. I think Massenburg surprised him with that move to the basket. The scouting report on Massenburg probably didn't go into great detail right. about his ability to put the ball on the floor and drive to the basket. And Popson just stood up a little too far on the outside defense. Popson will come out. Warren Martin checks back in for North Carolina. And Massenburg goes to the free throw line. Freshman from Sussex, Virginia. Only averages three and a half points a game. Hit that free throw. 33. Looking at the scoreboard, I haven't seen a change. I guess it's 33-25. I got 54. 
And they did change. 33-46. Massenburg gets a pair. His first two points of the ball game. And with 3.56 to go in the first half, we have a timeout here at the Smith Center in Chapel Hill. Our score, North Carolina 33 and Maryland 26. Everyone is worried about rising medical costs. But at Pilot Life, we're doing something about them. We've developed a practical cost containment program that monitors and evaluates charges, encourages second opinions and outpatient treatment, and counsels good health maintenance. It's helping employers make significant savings without sacrificing the quality of treatment. Stay tuned at halftime for details on how to enter Pepsi's Super Fan Contest and win a trip to next year's ACC Tournament. Three minutes, 56 seconds to go. First half, Carolina by seven. We want to pass along our best wishes to Gip Brewer in Greensboro. He's not been feeling well. And his son, Rick Brewer, the sports information director here at the University of North Carolina, and all of us want to pass along our best wishes to him for a speedy recovery. Explain this one to me, will you? Well, North Carolina has 15 subs, and they've scored two points. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that substitutions. I don't know, Mike. That, they tricked me with that one. Apparently, that's different. not 15 different players. We're talking about uh, number of substitutes. That's right. Hunter throws it away. Lebo tries to save it this time. Into the corner. Doherty saves it. And it's out of bounds, and it's out again to Carolina. Where's Carolina showing you some uh, refined passing ability there, passing it while falling out of bounds? No, that's not the way... Uh, Dean Smith draws it up during practice. I'm sure they don't practice that very much. But they've gotten the ball. 27 seconds on the shot clock. It does not recycle in that case. Kenny Smith got a pick and is wide open from 8 feet. Those are tough shots. Loose ball tipped outside. Smith got it. Carolina is getting all the loose basketball. This is the seventh offensive rebound that North Carolina has gotten today. They've converted the prior six. Let's see what they do here. Bingo. Guardy got away from Massenburg inside and scores in the 35-26. North Carolina back up by nine. And that's 13 points for Dart. Gatlin, nice move to get away from Smith. Doesn't do anything with it. It's 14 points that the Tar Heels have scored after getting the re offensive rebound. Bias goes low to Massenburg. This is Gatlin. On Kenny Smith. Won't go and Warren Martin with a rebound. North Carolina's defense has set the tone of the game to more of an up-tempo, full-court type contest, and Len Myers hasn't been able to get in the game for him. This is Darty, had Warren Martin go right by him. They get it into Martin, lost control, got it back. He caught that one with his legs. He grabbed that one with his legs. And then Madden gets the jam. Lefty Grizzell's got to be scratching his head. This is Baxter, gets it back to Gatlin. They need Bias to touch the ball and shoot it. He does, and it's short, Lebo in long rebound. Thanks so much for my coaching suggestions. Lebo. I think it's a good suggestion, Mike, but Maryland's got to slow down. They've got to create a much more half-court game, be more patient. That wasn't a bad shot by Lynn Bias. It was just too fast. Well, Lefty Grizzell thinking exactly the same time, and with 2.03 to go, he wants a timeout to talk it over. It's 37 to 26. Sometimes, and I don't mean this to sound like North Carolina is lucky and Maryland is unlucky, and not at this particular instance, but sometimes you get that feeling that when it starts going your way, you get every loose ball, whether you really deserve it or not. Well, now that's, that's true, Mike, but here we get to look at this last sequence. You can see North Carolina with some excellent passing. Warren Martin, we, he just got that ball from in between his legs and passed it back out. But the thing is, when a team comes in well-prepared, when a team is hustling, playing solid defense like North Carolina is, they make the breaks go their own way. Sure. Maryland is out of the game that they wanted to play. They really need to get it into a half-court game to make it a slower game. As we said, they were trying to spread the court to force North Carolina to commit to the traps. Then they had good passing lanes. And when they did that early, the game was tied, like at 19-19 and 21-21. But since that point, 
the North Carolina Tar Heels have created a full court helter skelter game that's been all to their advantage. The announcers for this game are approved and selected by Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, duplication, or reception without the express written permission of Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. Get a look at the North Carolina Brain Trust. And again, North Carolina getting the opportunities down close to the basket in the color. Maryland is not having the same kind of opportunities inside, and that's a huge differential. Gatlin against the double team for Lewis. This is Carolina's biggest lead, 37 to 26. We're under two minutes to go. Alley you bias. That's getting the ball close to Lenny Bias, and it's amazing that you can alley-oop over a team that has the size on the court that North Carolina does. Shows you not only the passing ability of Gatlin, but the leaping ability of Bias. Good defense by Lewis, got a fingertip on it, and Doherty, the last man to touch it out of bounds. Now that may have been the first assist for Gatlin in this ballgame. If it was, he broke John Lucas's all-time career record at Maryland, and Gatlin is only a junior. He has the best uh, assist to turnover ratio in the ACC. Bias with the fake, won't get the bucket, but got the foul from Warren Martin. Now this is what Maryland was able to do early in the game to make Len Bias exploit the man who was guarding him. Here's Gatlin's record-breaking assist right here. You watch Bias just push the elevator button for a higher floor, get up over top of everybody else. <laughs> Bias will go to the line for a pair here. It's 37-28. Len Bias with 13 points, three out of three from the line. He's nominated, nominated for virtually every award conceivable that's handed out to an individual. All-American honors the Wooden Award. Just a superb player. Hits them both, and it's 37 to 30 with a minute 25 to go. Bias authority, big offensive performance with the first half. We have some important defensive series for Maryland here. They've got to play better defense. They've got to force the Tar Heels away from the basket. This is Pops to Dory. Dory got away, goes to baseline to Pops and missed the shot. Lewis with a rebound. Great for Maryland. They played pretty good defense, but broke down at the end. North Carolina had an easy shot that they just didn't make. Gatlin looks to the Maryland bench. Lefty Grizel says, let's run the offense. There's another guy, Popson, now matched up against Bias. That makes four people who've tried to guard him. Now they've got Bias double team to the baseline, but he makes it anyhow. Len Bias really on fire. 17 points in the lead is cut to five. 30 seconds left. Maryland has scored six straight points after that timeout. After that timeout and after slowing down a little bit. Alley-oop inside, knocked away. 20 seconds left. The Terps will have a chance to cut into this lead again. Baxter doing a nice job showing that there's no need to hurry up the court. They'll try for the last shot here. We're down to 10. And they want the ball in Lynn Bias's hand. Four seconds left. He's got to get rid of it. And it's going to be Gatlin from downtown. Oh, no. Doherty got the rebound. So Maryland does a good job of cutting into an 11-point lead. They cut it down to this at halftime. North Carolina, 37, and Maryland, 32. Coming up at halftime, we'll uh, check back in with the Mazda game plan. We'll also be joined by Terry Gannon. We'll give you the Budweiser scoreboard and have a look at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, which in just about a month and a half will be ready for golf and all sorts <laughs> of beautiful things blooming. What a beautiful place. Well, what did you think of the first half? I thought North Carolina passed the ball about as well as I've seen them all year, and that's for a team that always passes it well. They passed the ball well. They moved very well to put themselves in positions where they could convert. The impressive thing that I thought was that North Carolina's defense pushed Maryland out of what they wanted to do. Stay with us at halftime. We're in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and we'll be back with our halftime show right after this from Bud. This Raycom Sports... Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions exclusive is being brought to you by Budweiser, NCNB, Piedmont Airlines, the Jefferson Pilot Companies, South Carolina National, Mazda,
Food Lion. And by Central Fidelity. At the conclusion of our game, we'll be choosing a player from each team as the Holly Farms players of the game. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the ACC to be distributed among member institutions under a conference-approved plan. The Holly Farms players of the game to be announced near the conclusion of our broadcast. 37-32 at halftime. 20 minutes of basketball still to come your way from the Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Take a look at the halftime statistics and the thing that is going to stand out the most, I think, Dan, the free throws, the fact that a Maryland has 11 more points on free throws, while North Carolina has 16 more points on field goals. The interesting thing about that to me, Mike, is the fact that Maryland only has six fouls. With North Carolina going inside constantly, to me, that means that Maryland just isn't playing very hard defensively, and I'm sure that fact hasn't escaped the notice of Lefty Grizzell. As you say, it's Maryland's free throwing that's keeping them in the game. Maryland doesn't have a lot of turnovers, but North Carolina has converted just about every one into a basket. North Carolina's rebounding margin is built principally on their offensive rebounding, and they've converted most of those as well. Turnover statistics interesting, I think, too. I think it was 6-2 to two at one point. Uh, Maryland had turned it over six times, Carolina only two, and then the Terps went like the last eight minutes without turning it over. I think that helped them get back in the ballgame. The individual scoring, also interesting, it's been a two-man game for both ball clubs. Lenny Bias, just unbelievable in the first half with 17 points. Derek Lewis with five points and has done a great job on the boards. For North Carolina, the leader's been Brad Darty. He's had a big first half, 13 points. Joe Wolf especially early, was very potent, and he has 10. North Carolina's dominated the offensive boards. Doherty and Wolf have been the principal culprits there as far as Maryland is concerned. Lenny Bias got his points, Mike, early in the half and late in the half. It was in that in-between time when North Carolina seized control of the game. There's Steve Hale, who picked up three personal fouls in the first 10 minutes of the opening half, and will start the second half. Hale started the game, Mike, matched up man-to-man -man against Lenny Bias, and it looks like that's the way they're going to start the second half. Now, Hale with the three fouls may not go against Bias, but Carolina is going to start that three-guard lineup. Joe Wolf is going to be matched up against Lenny Bias. Maryland will have the basketball down by five. Gatlin gets it in with a dangerous pass to Lewis. Mike, you talk about North Carolina constantly attacking. Here it is, the first throw-in of the second half, and they're trying to steal the dog. Gatlin, good pass to Baxter, but he couldn't handle the pass to get the shot. Gatlin misses. Rebound goes to Wolf. Baxter did not score in the first half. Mike, he had 15 in that first game, and I think that was a, a key. Maryland has not been able to get the production from Bas Baxter that they need. Another player who didn't shoot well in the first half was Lebo. He was 0 for 4. Kenny Smith from the outside. Complete player, 39-32. The lead is back to 7. Half a dozen for Kenny Smith. Smith's really come on as the Tar Heels enter their stretch drive. He's averaging about 11 points for the year, but 15 in games recently. Bias to the baseline. Can't get his shot to fall. Darty to Smith. Well, they look for Kenny Smith on that break. Wolf throws it away. Gatlin with a steal. Gatlin gets it ahead to Baxter against Hale. Hale had to let him go because of the three fouls and Baxter score. That was good defensive effort inside by Derek Lewis. I thought Wolf had a lane to the basket, but Lewis went on the floor and tipped the ball away. Long beaten by Darty again. Excellent ball movement by Carolina. 15 for Darty, and it's 41-34. Maryland's got to keep a, keep some way to have those guys cut across the basket. They've got to get in front and make North Carolina cut in a different direction. Here's a whistle and a foul inside. It's going to be on Joe Wolf, and that is his third personal foul. Wolf Trying is, to lead from Bias. Wolf has been the most effective Tar Heel defender against Lenny Bias this evening. Hale also operating with three, but Dean Smith doesn't have to worry too much, not with the depth he's got on this club. There's no coach likes to have a player no, no. on the bench with fouls. Long lost it out of bounds. Lewis threw him a tough pass. That was really a tough pass to him. I think Lewis should have taken that shot. It's the seventh turnover for Maryland in the ballgame. 
and a blind pass by Lebo. Talk about tough pass. That, that had a little mustard on it. Long, I think, was fortunate that he didn't get a foul call. Doherty is, has good quickness inside, and he's using his quickness to advantage against Long, beating him to spots, and Long has been forced to play behind him. Carolina sets so many screens in so many different ways. Darning. Line drives one home. It's 43-34. Carolina's lead is back to nine. And Doherty has 17. Doherty just moved him into good position and then waited until the pressure left and knocked in the turnaround jump. Baxter wide open. Looked a little hesitant, but buried it. He's got four. Doherty down the lane. Saw Long coming and gave up the ball. Somehow got it back. It's loose to Wolf. Blocked by Long. That's three blocks for Derek Lewis tonight. Bad pass to Hale down on his knees. Still loose. Still loose. And here's Gavin. Oh, both coaches up screaming for a foul on that bias. Once again, passes it off. Lewis back to bias. He won't pass it this time. Missed the shot. Tipped it. Kept it alive outside. And it's at the Maryland. Mike, it's funny. The shot that Lenny Bias passed up was the one he should have taken. That was an yep. easy shot. The one he took was a difficult shot in traffic. Well, I think he gives up the first one saying, I'm a team player, but you miss it. I'm, and I get it back. I'm not giving it up again. Good Gatlin, pass. Oh, nice move by Gatlin off the fine pass. And he gets the bucket 43-38. Six points for Gatlin. Maryland back with it to five. Still matched up in the man-to-man -man defense against the Tar Heels. Yeah. to Lebo. Baxter went for the steal, didn't get it. Wolf left alone, 16 feet. Oh, boy, such a good outside shooter. Wolf has a dozen tonight. He's hitting 54.9% from the floor. Tar Heels continue to make hay with those screens inside and good tough cuts off those screens. This is Baxter guarded by Lebo. Really took advantage of him in the game at College Park. Took him to the baseline and just uh, tore him up, but he has not been able to do it tonight. The Hale is matched up inside against Massenburg. And with that tremendous height advantage, you think Maryland might be able to find a way to go in there, but as yet they have not. Doherty knocked that one out of bounds. Here's Warren Martin comes in. Lebo will go out. So Carolina's got the big front line in there again. Must be a very good feeling for Dean Smith to change the entire character of his team with just one substitution as he can in that instant. The shot clock is at 12 seconds. This is Lewis out to Baxter. Gives it to Gatlin. Lefty Grisella up yelling, saying, hey, the shot clock. Somebody's got to put it up. Bias realizes it. He'll put it up at two and cut. Oh, what a tough shot for Lenz Bias. He's got 19. I don't think any of the Maryland players on the court, Mike, realized that the shot clock was that low. They tended to think that because it was an inbounds pass that the clock reset, which That's of right. course it didn't. 45-40, the Turks are back within five, and they're in the two-three zone right now. Oh, a little strong on that jumper. Hale offensive rebound. Missed the shot, but he's got the ball inside. Once again, Maryland doesn't block anybody out on the offensive board, and North Carolina makes them pay for it. As you said, Mike, Maryland went into his own. Nobody blocks out Steve Hale. You can see him clearly all alone inside. Looked like Doherty and Martin were in good position as well. Hale's an 81% free throw shooter. And he missed that one. Well, it's unusual to see Hale and Kenny Smith miss free throws, and they've each missed one tonight. Hale with four points, averages 11.2. Got that one. And the free throw makes it Carolina 46 to 40. We've got a timeout on the court here at Chapel Hill. 15 minutes, 44 seconds left to go. Stay with us. We have a good one here at Chapel Hill. 15, 44 to go in the ball game. Carolina by six over Maryland. Mike Patrick and Dan Bonner, glad you could be with us. It's been a big night for Darty with 17, and Joe Wolf has 12 points and eight rebounds for North Carolina. Glenn Bias leading the way from Maryland. He has 19 points. North Carolina stays in the man-to-man. -man. This is Massenburg, the freshman center, and lost it. Got to protect that baby inside, especially against the young men in the light blue. Steve Hale just reached around and knocked the ball away from Massenburg. Somebody looking triple team down there, but it worked. Maryland's Wolf. Stays with Warren Martin, who lost it. 
looked like Martin was trying to jump over a spot on the floor or something. He didn't control the ball. Down the lane goes Lewis, and that's got to be an offensive foul it is. Derek Lewis just got up ahead of Steve from the top of the key and said, look out world, here I come. And this is something that you rarely see anyone do successfully against North Carolina. Somebody's always stepping in to take the charge, and Warren Martin is not the quickest guy in the world, but Lewis had such a long run to yeah. get in there. Martin had plenty of time to get plenty over. Of time. Last thing you want to do is look up and see Warren Martin blocking your path. It'd be better than looking up and see Warren Martin coming at you. Well, that's true. 46-40. North Carolina holding a little six-point lead. Kenny Smith gets around the screen. And it's an eight-point lead. Carolina has had little difficulty with this Maryland zone. The Terrapins have been very passive in the zone. Baxter guarded by Hale this time down. Bias wants the basketball. Speedy Jones is in. For the first time in a long while. Bias goes baseline against Doherty. Can't get his shot. Nice job by Doherty to get to the baseline and cut him off. Wants the ball back. He's got Doherty on his back again. Jumper won't go. Offensive rebound. Lewis and he's fouled by Warren Martin. Brad Doherty now is matching up against Lenny Bias, and that's the fifth or sixth guy that's been matched up against Bias. And you see Warren Martin coming over to help. Bias getting the ball inside creates some pressure for the Tar Heels. That time, nobody was able to block out Derek Lewis. That's number three on Warren Martin, and that will get Steve Bucknall back in the ball game. Really, no rap on North Carolina that they haven't found anyone to guard him. Neither has anyone else in the country. Uh, that's for sure. So Martin is out with three fouls. Steve Hale has three, and Joe Wolf has three. Lewis at the free throw line, and hits it. Six points for Derek Lewis tonight. One shot, guys. And six rebounds. Maryland still has a Mr. Free Throw. And it's kept him in the ball game. Too. Lewis got it again. Seven points for Lewis, 48-42, with 14.07 to go in the ball game. Hale not looking for a shot of one. He's in the door. He's short on the jumper. Bias with the rebound. Now Maryland looked a little more aggressive in the zone that time, Mike. And sometimes that happens when you play a zone and you press full court, you get more aggressive on the Bias jumped into Doherty, got him in the air, and draws the foul. Boy, he is so tough. It's very, very difficult to do, but if Doherty's going to guard Bias out here, he's got to make sure that he stays on the floor. Bias made sure he got the foul on that one. Lenny with 19 points tonight. It's such a difficult thing to do when a guy gives you a good fake as Bias did that time to stay on the court, particularly with a guy like Bias who's just as likely to go up and shoot it from there. He's now six out of six from the line tonight. That gives him 19 straight free throws he's hit. Make it 20 and it's 48-44. Maryland has not been this close in a long time. And Bias has 21 points. This is Bucknall. The Terrapins were pressing on that particular occasion. Mike with Lefty Drizel up and motioning them to get back in the defense. Hale to Smith. Back to Hale. Nice fake. Put it up with the right hand. It got him. What a play by Hale. Penetration inside that zone can be deadly. Here's Baxter trying to get away from the trap. The lead is back to six. This is Speedy Jones. Put up. Offensive foul, Tom Jones. And Lefty Drizel throws the coat off his shoulders. His assistant coaches are up, and Lefty is really on fire. That was a pretty good 360 stomp right there. But here's Tom Jones driving to the basket. Oh, yeah. Lefty may have a pretty good yeah, complaint. Yeah, I think he did. But he's got to be careful. He doesn't want to get a technical foul. His team is still in the game. Brad Doherty got away with one. He moved his body underneath the player. This is Lebo. Doherty turned around. Jump. Got it. That's really a good pass by Lebo. He was looking to the outside, was able to bounce pass it inside. That's 19 points for Brad Doherty, and the lead is back to eight. Wolf knocks it away, Gatlin retrieves to Baxter. Good job by Baxter to hold it up and get things settled down before they attack. You don't want to get into a helter-skelter situation there. Baxter gets by Smith, pulls up for his jumper, won't go, a lot of contact, no whistle. It's pretty good defense. Sure was. Hale into Doherty, fall away, jumper, won't go, Lewis rebound. I think Lenny Bias got away with one there. Doherty was a fall away jumper. I don't think he intended it to, to fall away quite so much. A 
and the crowd now trying to really help Carolina. This is Bias working on Doherty, goes to the baseline. Baxter against Wolf, and he got it. And they throw it away. It was a touch that's out to, out to Maryland. Last touch by Carolina. North Carolina tries very hard after the made basket to get the ball inbounds quickly and to put some pressure going down the court. That time Lewis just hung around long enough to get a hand on it and deflect it. Timeout on the court with 11 minutes and 59 seconds to go in the game. It's Carolina 52, Maryland 46. And we'll be back after this from Bud. This Bud's for all that you do. Carlos, I need 100 of these by Friday. My friend, I'm retired. My son is running the business now. Oh. You know just where you're going. It's true, your pride is showing cause you. You make America work and this Bud's for you. Here's to you, Beechwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. most technologically advanced aircraft took off from North Carolina. In 1986, history repeats itself. Piedmont Airlines introduces the Boeing 737-300, the world's most advanced way to fly. Introducing an incredible advance in Gillette shaving smoothness, new Atra Plus. The Plus is this unique white strip that releases lubricants as you shave. You never felt anything smoother. New Atra Plus by Gillette, the essence of shaving. We talked in the first half that Jeff Baxter had not produced any points here. It's a very tough shot. Baxter, the key to that play was he got himself set before he went up against Joe Wolf. Wolf was frozen to the floor by Baxter's moves, didn't get up to get a chance to block. They were giving up uh, 10 inches <laughs> on that matchup in the lane. Baxter got up there about as high as he could. Maryland with the turnover has a chance to cut it back to four. Bias at the baseline, goes by Hale, reverse. Oh, holy cow, what a shot. 23 for Bias. Once again, Maryland showing you that when they beat the double team, they can be pretty effective. Good passing out of the trapping situation. Trying to keep North Carolina outside now, as most teams uh, have had the most success, has been keeping them outside, and make Smith and Lebo and Hale hit those jumpers. So of course, they're very good at that. That's why they only have one loss. <laughs> The Turtles are still in the zone, but it's a much more aggressive zone. Wolf cross court to Lebo. Tried to get it to Dory, and Bias comes up with the ball. The lead is four, and Maryland has the basketball and a chance to cut into it. Lebo really likes to look one way and pass yeah. the other, Mike, and I thought he fooled Dory that time. Ten turnovers for both clubs right now. They get it low to Lewis. What a move, and he's fouled. Lewis made a great move, and Wolf is going to be called for that foul. That will be his fourth. Lenny Bias showing you that he can shoot from anywhere. Nice spinning shot up on the board. You know, if you have fingers like mine, you can't do that. <laughs> they have to go around the basketball. Wolf will go out with four. Martin comes back in with three. You don't have to tell me that I can't yeah. do that, Mike, with your fingers or my fingers or anybody else's. And you need Bias's fingers, and uh, Len Bias isn't going to give them up. Lewis, free throw line. Maryland as a team has not missed a free throw. Bias has a few more skills than just his fingers. Huh? Lewis doesn't he ever. Lewis has hit six out of six, has eight points. The lead is three. This could cut it to two and does. Maryland has made a living at the line tonight. Maryland's really showed some character coming back in this game, Mike. At the start of the second half, it looked like North Carolina might blow them out, but the Turks have hung right in there. John Johnson is in at guard for Maryland, getting back to a win. Carolina continues to look inside against that 2-3 zone. The key for Maryland has been that they haven't turned it over nearly as much, and North Carolina's opportunities have not been as easy. Hale gets an easy shot, won't go. Shouldn't have said easy, none of them are, not in this league. But a shot you might expect Hale to make, and Maryland, with 10.25 to go, has a chance to tie it up. Speedy Jones in the lane, won't go, but he's fouled. And who is
was it called on? Called on Lebo. Fouls against Jeff Lebo coming across. Lenny Bias getting the ball inside to Speedy Jones, and that's a problem with the lineup that North Carolina's playing. Speedy Jones with a height advantage against Hale. Beat him inside, forced Lebo to come down and help out. Jones is 60 and a half percent free throw shooter. Maryland must have been doing some shooting practice somewhere. They are making everything as a team. They shoot 71% on the season, but they have hit 19 out of 19 tonight. Make it even 20, and it is tied at 52. Let's find the free throw coach. <laughs> he can get hired tomorrow by anybody. We're going to have to not count the ones that hit the rim, for heaven's sake. Ten minutes, nine seconds to go. Dean Smith up off the bench asking the referee for something about contact inside. And Maryland's defense getting more and more aggressive. Derek Lewis is doing a nice job bouncing whoever comes in there, be it Martin or Doherty. And Carolina for the last two or three trips down have taken a long time to get into the offense. And how often has Kenny Smith done that when you needed the big bucket? He has ten. Warren Morton set a nice screen out top against Keith Gatlin that got Smith loose for that. Gatlin calling the play once, gets it to Bias. Back to Gatlin, who's wide open. Missed the shot, Hale with a long rebound. Important defensive series right here for Maryland. Smith again. Kenny Smith has hit four straight, and it's 56-52. Here's Bias at the baseline, goes by Morton. Shot won't go, Jones kept it alive, and the rebound of Doherty. Great defense by Jeff Lebo. He stepped in to take the charge and distracted Bias just enough. Hail to the baseline. Six in a row for Carolina after it had been tied at 52. Boy, what emotion in this ball game. This has been a beauty. Eight minutes, 50 seconds to go. And Lefty Grizzell wants the officials to come over and talk to him. He is in a stomping mood. Timeout with 8.50 to go in the game. North Carolina, 58. Maryland, 52. Are you anything like my brother Jack? He figured the only way to get into a serious road car was to go empty his bank account and buy something from the Black Forest. But I talked him into driving a Mazda 626. Now he's going around telling everyone he knows about refinements, like the better aerodynamics, the new fuel injection, and the great performance. But the way I figured, I saved old Jack about 7,000 bucks. You think I'll ever see any of it? No way. That's what I thought. The enemy. Rain. A mere one-eighth inch can float your car off the road. Thus the rationale for Vector. Goodyear's unique all-season radio. So advanced, its crisscross tread actually pumps away water to help more tire and your car stay on the road. You either have Goodyear Vectors or you need them. Conclusion of tonight's game. Join us. We'll be choosing a player from each team as the Holly Farms players of the game. Eight minutes, 50 seconds left. We had been tied at 52. North Carolina has run off six straight points, and the Tar Heels now lead by six. And the free throws, as we pointed out before, Maryland is really doing a job. And two, three of those uh, misses for North Carolina have come from Kenny Smith and Steve Hale. And Lefty Grizzell is about as upset as he gets. He wanted to talk to the officials during that timeout. And the left-hander, who is known for stomping, got off a couple of beauties. Well, he's known for stomping, Mike, but that's sort of in the past. It's been a long time since I've seen him do as many stomps in one game as he has tonight. He would love to be the first coach to beat Carolina in this new building. Boy, wouldn't he, though. Now, Carolina has changed defensively. They've dropped back into a zone defense. Bias wants the ball, gets it in low, and it's taken away by Doherty. And Lewis tried to hand it off to Jones, and Lefty stomps again. Here's Lebo. 
Missed the shot. Tom Jones with a rebound. Contact, and Jones wanted to foul. Didn't get it. Carolina's got the basketball. Warren Martin stuck his big hand up there and knocked it away from Tom Jones. And what Carolina did in the first half to pull away, they've done here. Good defense and some second shots. Now that's a walk by Lebo. Lebo walked, got that extra step at the beginning of his drive. 7.57 left to go in the ball game. Both clubs now with 11 turnovers. Every time the Tar Heels have had the Terrapins reeling, though, Maryland's gotten up off the mat and come back at them. We'll see if they have a couple more of those drives left. This is Baxter, he and Gatlin, the Maryland guards. Baxter guarded by Lebo. Want Lenny Bias to get the basketball, but Carolina doing a nice job trying to keep it away from him. Here's Bias to the baseline. Warren Martin may have gotten a piece of that. Lewis is fouled as he goes up for the shot. And they're going to get Lebo for it. Lebo's doing a nice job inside. He's sort of ignoring Baxter and trying to get to the passing lanes to help out. Bias draws three people. There's nobody else there. Lebo commits the foul. May have also, could have gotten Kenny Smith on that one too. He looked like he had a little reach in. It's interesting to note that Dean Smith's tried a lot of different people against Len Bias, and I think now he's got the guy on Bias and Brad Doherty that he's wanted on him the whole game. Maryland misses the first free throw. But you can't put a guy as valuable as Doherty against Bias for the entire game due to foul trouble. But now that it's down to crunch time, Doherty's on Bias and doing a pretty good job. Lewis had hit 7 out of 7. And Maryland now 21 out of 22 at the free throw line. But the lead is 5 for North Carolina. 58-53 with 7.23 left in this ball game. You surprised at all that Maryland's gone back to man-to-man? -to -man? I don't think they're in a man-to-man, -man, Mike. It looks to me like they're playing sort of a triangle. Derek Lewis is staying at home at the top of the key there. I think what's happening is it's a triangle in two. Baxter and uh, Gatlin are guarding Smith and Hale. Smith and Lebo, excuse me, man-to-man. -man. No, Smith and Hale are guarding man-to-man. -man. Shot clock is down to 12 seconds. Lebo finally hits one. That's two points for Jeff Lebo, and the lead is seven. North Carolina does not seem to be confused by it, however. They moved the ball very effectively. They almost seem to have instant recognition of anything somebody wants to do against them. Lewis. And they're pointing at Lebo, and Lebo has that stunned look on his face like, I wasn't even in the vicinity. Well, he was in the vicinity of Jeff Baxter, and that's where the foul was called. And he, Lebo's going up to Hank Nichols. He just said, what did I do? Maybe we can pick it up here. I think that's what they called the foul for Lebo for, stepping in front and getting in the way of Lenny Bias. Getting he's, an elbow in the head. Yeah, is he, what? he fouled Bias's elbow with his forehead. That's a tough way to get a foul. Sure is. But that's the kind of thing that Lebo has been doing. He's been stepping in front of Bias. He's been stepping into the passing lane, and he's been very effective. And I think that the Maryland players have been talking to the officials about that. Bias with 23 will go to the free throw line to increase it. 60 to 54, it's back to six. You can hear the officials underneath saying, watch the elbows. The elbows. Oh. Bias hits them both. 60-55. Bounce to Lebo, guarded by Baxter. Now they're back to a man-to-man. -man. Like good aggressive defense by Baxter out front. Becoming a factor, 626 left in this one. Hale guarded by Jones. Maryland being very aggressive. Carolina showing some good patience. They're not hurrying at all against this defense. Eddie Smith to Lebo. Four points for Lebo. He's hit his last two shots. Have to really be impressed with his play, Mike. He's only got four points, but he's done a lot of little things that have really helped North Carolina. That was a tough shot. Len Bias was standing there looking at it. Well, you don't come in and play for a freshman unless you're a heck of a talent. North Carolina back to the zone defense. It's important that Maryland recognize and recognize quickly. Baxter, who averages nine points a game, has not done much tonight. Made a great save there, though. Bias just almost threw the ball in the first row. Shot clock is at 12, but Bias will get it off in plenty of time and bank at home. Bias with 27. Why they call him all American Because he can play for anybody. The margin is back to five. With 519 to go, and they're going to call Len Bias for the foul on Warren Martin. That'll be two on Len Bias. 
There's no need for Len Bias to be that close to Warren Martin at that point. Martin's not really going to put the ball on the floor and dribble past you. That is only the fourth team foul called against Maryland. And only the tenth foul called against Maryland the entire ballgame. I say, my God, that speaks to me some lack of aggressiveness on defense. Can he spin at the baseline? Blocked by Lewis. Rebound. Tobias, that's five blocks for say, Lewis. That's four or five blocks for Lewis. At six foot seven, he's the human eraser. 62-57, just under five minutes to go. Oh my. And here Doherty got Baxter with a forearm, and now he'll help him up. Oh, did he get him. Now that's, that's the hard way to get to the free throw line. Somebody's going to have to point Jeff Baxter in the right direction. <laughs> he really does look a little stunned out there. Now, Doherty's listed at 245 and 611 and three quarters. Truth be known, he may be a what shade bigger than that in both areas. What do you think? He's about uh, 611.85? Something like that. Baxter at the free throw line with a chance to cut into a five-point lead. He missed it. Missed the front end of a one-and-one. -one. Big shots there. Maryland's been carrying the game at the free throw line the whole time, Mike, yeah, but that was a big miss. Hale guarded by Jones. It's a tough matchup for Jones. We'll see how speedy he really is. Lebo, three for three. He's got the hot hand, and it couldn't have come at a better time for North Carolina. The North Carolina guards, Kenny Smith, Lebo, Steve Hale, have taken over in the last few minutes the offensive punch for the Carolina Tar Heels. Baxter gets it to Gatlin. Four minutes, 18 seconds to go in the game. It is a seven-point lead. Len Bias has done all he could, but has not gotten a lot of help from him. But Lebo with a steal. Smith against Gatlin. Missed the shot, and Baxter with a rebound. Great defense by Gatlin just to get in his way, and it made Kenny Smith miss. Says, I want the ball. He's on Hale this time. Missed it. Rebound to Tom Jones. Jump book won't go. Lewis kept it alive. And here comes Kenny Smith. Good aggressive rebounding by Maryland to no effect. And Doherty with a jam that could have done it gives him a nine point lead on the pass from Kenny Smith. Doherty with 21. Excuse me, Dan. Maryland's only got one timeout, Mike, and it looks like Coach Lefty Brazil is reluctant to take it here. They've been doing what they want to do on offense the last couple of times down. They just can't get the ball in the hole. Out the to Jones. And Jones does that better than anyone else with Keith Gatlin. That is four points, and the lead is cut to seven. Four points for Tom Jones, that is. Zone for North Carolina, those accomplishing their purpose. They're making the Terrapins take a lot of time off the clock. And here is Doherty. He is fouled, and a good job by Lewis to come across and commit the personal, or Doherty gets another crowd-involved jam. Doherty goes right by Len Bias, who went for the steal and got there too late. As you say, that's a good foul by Derek Lewis. Good pass by Lebo. You see, Len Bias was just a couple of steps too late. I think he was trying to steal the ball. Doherty recognized very well and went to the basket. I'll take Lebo out of the ball game and get Warren Martin back in. This will be for defensive purposes as Doherty goes to the free throw line. Doherty with 21 points, eight rebounds. Boy, you put him, he and Len Bias on the same court and you really just watch these guys play. Fun to watch. Two out of three from the line. These are big shots. The lead is eight points with 2.58 left. Carolina usually hits those big ones. 2.58 to go in the ball game. There's a timeout on the court. Our score, North Carolina 68, Maryland 59. We'll be back after this. advantage of Jerry's special purchase of new Cavaliers and S10 Blazers. 
buyer lease direct from one of the nation's largest in-stock inventories, and experience the difference in savings Jerry's volume buying power can mean to you. Brand new Cavalier's only $156 a month, or four-wheel drive S10 Blazer's only $219 a month. Buyer lease direct from Chevrolet sales leader, where volume sales mean volume discounts. Jerry Chevrolet, our prices are unbeatable. margin is nine points for the North Carolina Tar Heels who have already won 25 games this year an incredible 14th time under Dean Smith that they have won 25 games as a comparison John Wooden won 25 games or more 11 times it's an impressive record by coach Dean Smith but then again you don't get buildings named after you unless you have impressive <laughs> that's right if he'd uh, if his career high was uh, eight or nine wins the last three or four years, this would be named something else and not the Dean E. Smith Center. Bias from outside, and he got it. Lynn Bias with 29. Oh, my! And he made the steal and a jam! What a play by Bias! Holy cow! And that cuts the lead down to five. Now, that was incredible for Lynn Bias. Just anticipated and went after it. Carolina trying to work the clock. This is Darty against Lewis. Picked up his dribble, loose ball. Jones has it, gets it to Baxter. Baxter goes in against Hale with a finger roll, and it's 68. What a touch on, and Dean Smith is up asking for timeout. Maryland, who's gotten back in the game every time with patient play, suddenly explodes for six points in a row. Maryland must have scored six points in 12 seconds, and they've cut the lead to three. Timeout, it's Carolina 68, Maryland 65. This is a revolutionary advancement in shaving from Gillette Research. The brush, Gillette announces Brush Plus. A shaving concentrate and brush in one. A brush to lift your whiskers with the soothing warmth only a brush can give you. A concentrate with extra softeners and lubricants that are massaged deep into your beard. For a shave that is superior. Brush Plus from Gillette for a superior shave. This Honda Civic has been held up as the best value in a four-door import. But now there's the 86 Colt DL. Same size engine, same front wheel drive, same room for five, but they're not the same. The Colt is less expensive by $1,000 flat. Colt, imported for Dodge and Plymouth, built by Mitsubishi in Japan. Colt, it's all the Japanese you need to know. Watch this, that's all I can say. <laughs> Now, this, that's not an easy shot right there. What do you think? That's a 20-footer? Right. Now, here, Bias. This goes right and gets... Now, watch this. It's back over the head. A little showtime. Why not? Bias has 31 of Maryland's 65 points. Just an incredible athlete. He now only needs 69 points to become Maryland's all-time leading scorer, surpassing Albert King. He will get the 69 in the remainder of their game. I'll tell you what, what, Mike, with the cost of a college education today and me having a 20-month-old son, I think I'll just show him tapes of Len Bias to yeah. get him inspired early. 68-65, 2 minutes, 13 seconds to go. And now North Carolina cannot be so much concerned about milking the clock. They're going to have to score in order to win. That's run by Maryland, put him right back in the game, Mike. Hale guarded by Baxter, back door. Blocked. Bias got that. And somehow Lebo got the ball out of there. John Johnson lost him. But the shot was blocked inside. Now a minute 54 to go. Here's a whistle and a foul away from the ball. And they're going to call John Johnson, I believe, for holding. And Dean Smith, oh, <laughs> what a look he got from the officials when he said something. Lebo with a nice backdoor cut, but you see Bias getting the ball. And Bias just lost the handle on it. But look at Lebo. He's got enough presence of mind to just get it out away from the traffic. He knows he's got another 45 seconds. That was only the 16th foul. The next one will put him in the bonus. The clock of Backer, 1.45 to go, 36 on the shot clock. 
Well, it's a three-point North Carolina lead. Excuse me, Dan. North Carolina scores here. It's going to be awfully tough for Maryland. Back door to Kenny Smith, but Gatlin got a piece of it. Lewis forced it back outside. Shot clock is at 18 seconds. Already trying to make some kind of a move. Now he gets it to Wolf. Oh, what a cut. Down the lane. Missed the shot. Bias with a rebound. What a 1 cut. 12 left. Yes, it was. He really blew down there, but Bias was waiting for him. Money Gatlin Bias. gets it to Baxter. Bias wants the basketball. I think I'd give it to him. Oh, yeah. He works on Hale, leads into one, missed the shot, oh. an offensive foul call on Len Bias, and he is beside himself. That will be three on Bias. What a good crossover dribble by Bias, and that's a good call. Lebo, yeah, Lebo got, got there. there. And that Lebo has been in the middle of the action here when he's been in the game. Well, he does all the little dirty things that I think all Carolina players are taught to do that, that win ball games. He does it so well as a freshman, though, Mike, and that's the impressive thing about the well, young What did man. Dean Smith call him? Fundamentally as sound as any player he'd ever seen coming out of high school. And of all the guys he's been able to recruit, that's not bad. That's true. He's had some good players come out of high school. Lee, he sure has. Lebo was six at the line, and he makes it a four-point margin at 69-65 with 58 seconds left. The clock is now back on North Carolina's side. Lebo short on that one and missed. Bias. Maryland's got to hurry. They need to score at least twice, and Bias from 20. Oh! Timeout. 33 for Bias, and Maryland will use its last timeout. They're within two at 69-67. What a ball game. We've got 48 seconds left to go. And we'll be back after this from Natural Light. Charlie here asked for a secret fish recipe. I told him to start by putting some Natural Light on ice. It's severe with the taste for food. Then I told him a fish for eating is best caught with a cross-eyed crawfish, only where the water's wet. Then I told him the fish had to swallow it, hook, line, and sinker. And <laughs> can't come if he didn't. Yeah, all natural, less filling. It's natural light from Anheuser-Busch. You have a natural, Charlie. Didn't believe it for a minute. I had you hooked for a good 59 seconds, though. <laughs> You've either got to be a little crazy to take a long trip in a small truck, or you've got to have the right truck. If you go drive one of these new Mazdas, you'll never know how good a small truck can be. This SE5 is really a kick to drive. It's got all kinds of room inside. It's quiet and quick. And even though its price might lead you to believe it's some kind of bare-bones truck, believe it or not, what you see is what you get. Yeah, and there's plenty of room back here for what you got today, Mr. Garner. <laughs> the lead is two points. North Carolina leads by that two have an interesting statistic for you if you are a statistic fan. The series between these teams, Lefty Drizel and Dean Smith, 7 and 26. The people of Maryland say if Maryland had 35 more points in those 11 games, the series would be tied at 19. I don't know how much that means, but if you're going through statistics books like John Madry does all the time, our statisticians, they're fun to look at. Lenny Bias, what a night. 12 of 21 field goals, 9 out of 9 free throws, 5 rebounds. I think he's got 4 assists and 33 points. What a great individual performance, Mike. I don't know that I have seen a better one this year. I have not. Trying to get it inbounds, they do to Kenny Smith, the double team. Maryland with good. press. Good Lebo job. Will beat it. There is a three-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. The shot clock at 35. That's right, Mike. Maryland has to play good, solid defense. Because if North Carolina doesn't shoot, Maryland's going to have three seconds. Get the ball out to Smith. The shot clock at 22. You've got the game clock on your screen. It's a two-point lead for North Carolina. Trying for backdoor cuts anytime they can. Shot clock at 11. Be a bad idea by, for Steve Hale to stay. Oh my! And Johnson went out and went for the steal, and they'll call it a one and one. And they send Kenny Smith, an 82.4 percent free throw shooter, to the line. And Kenny Smith missed the shot earlier tonight. 
That's a tough spot for the freshman John Johnson, Mike. I, it looked to me like he was almost doing that intentionally. It, it, it did to me too, and, and I didn't. Uh, I would not understand if he would want to commit an intentional foul. If he did, I just don't understand. Smith with 12 points, but he is 0 for 1 from the free throw line. There are 10 seconds left to go. The shot clock is off. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike, don't bet the Rams. He's going to miss this free throw. He's a great clutch player. I wouldn't want to put a nickel on this. Uh, Kenny Smith missing either one of these. The front end of a 1-1. One one. If he makes the first, he gives his team a three-point lead. Maryland does not have a timeout left in this situation. Smith could ice it here. And he missed it. Jones has to get it up. Oh, this is interesting, huh? Gatlin to Baxter. Baxter. Give it in. Two seconds left. Carolina wants timeout. Jeff Baxter, who had done virtually nothing all night long, with two seconds left, hits maybe the biggest shot of his life. Oh, he caught a basketball game we're seeing here. What a great effort by Maryland to come back in the game and we're just talking how Kenny Smith such a great clutch player misses the front end of the one and one now we'll get a chance to see the whole play good block out inside by Maryland Speedy Jones is the guy who's going to control the ball Gatlin's going to get it up court Baxter doesn't wait to go to Bias he's got the open jumper and he buries it well he couldn't wait if he goes to Bias Bias would have had a, a tough shot under pressure although I'm sure Lenny would have liked to have had the basketball but we're tied at 69 with two seconds left Carolina has two timeouts left what do you do in this situation try to throw it half court try another timeout well you know the North Carolina can always do that myself I would think that it would depend on what the defense does if you're able to get your first pass by the defender and create a situation where you have a man advantage I think that the North Carolina is just going to go but if you're able to get the ball in bounds and say it's a three on three or a four on four situation then yeah call the timeout with one second so I think it'll just all depend upon what kind of a situation the inbounds pass creates two seconds left we are tied at 69 Maryland with a really courageous comeback to get back in this ball game. Let's go back to what we said at the start of this broadcast. There are a lot of people that feel Maryland had to win this game to give themselves a bid to the NCAA tournament. You beat number one at home on the road, and people are going to take some notice of that. They sure are. And another thing we talked in our very opening segment of the game, we talked about the interesting type of things that have happened in this Maryland-North Carolina matchup. There's been a couple of times at North Carolina when Maryland's been this close only to let it get away. Everybody we'll see ready? if they can break out of that jinx this time. One, two. two seconds to go. Wolf trying to inbound the ball, wants to throw up the length of the court, gets it to Hale, and Hale signals for the timeout with one second on the clock. So they will have that. Now they have one timeout left. So with a second to go, and this is always a very touchy situation. You don't know if the clock is just ticked from under two and has a second and seven eighths left on it, or if it's ready to go under one and go to zero. Of course, it's pretty tough to get the ball turned and get a shot off within that one second. Well, the important thing for Maryland now is to play good defense to make sure they don't give up a layup inside, but of all things, don't <laughs> commit a foul. There's no way you want to foul the shooter on this play. You want to get your hands up. You want to get away. You know, it, by all odds, Maryland should be able to force North Carolina into a difficult shot. One second on the clock. Just looking at the statistics to see what North Carolina has done at home. Their closest game in the new Smith Center. Three points against Duke. At Georgia Tech, they won by eight. Notre Dame, they won by 12. Clemson, they won by 17. And Wake Forest, uh, they won 91 to 62. So the Duke game was a three-point game for them. Unless something highly unusual happens, this will be at least the closest game in regulation they have had in the new building. That's right. Now we'll see what happens here. What does it look like to you? A lob over the top to Kenny Smith? Maybe they'll probably try Kenny Smith or lob it to Doherty in the lane. I've seen them try something like that before. The inbounds man is Wolf, guarded by Massenburg. Got five seconds to get it in to Lebo, and he couldn't hold it. And he didn't have enough time to get it off, even if he had held it. Really, neither player's fault. Wolf had to put some mustard on it to get it there, and Lebo had no chance to hold it. There was so much on it. Now, what is Lefty Drizel doing? 
This is where you talk about a coach being greedy. Lefty's not happy that it's in overtime. He wants another second so they can win the game. Well, I'm not sure exactly what he's asking for now, but we will have overtime. This year, Maryland is 1-1. One one. They played against Nevada, Las Vegas, and Stanford. North Carolina, of course, in that great game against Georgia Tech. They are 1-0 oh in overtime. I honestly had a feeling when we came in this building tonight that this was going to be a game we could remember for a long time, and uh, I'll take it right now and remember it for a long time, regardless <laughs> of what happens in overtime. Well, Maryland has done a great job. We were talking about how in the first half, it seemed when Maryland played slowly, that they were able to be in the game. When they got a little bit down, they started, they played a little bit slower, and they caught up. And just as they were going to, just as they made that run to catch up so quickly, even though they caught up for most of the game by playing slowly, it was a dramatic six points within a couple of seconds with that it actually got them back in the game. And the big play right now for North Carolina is that missed one and one by Kenny Smith with 10 seconds to go that allows Baxter to make that long jumper to tie the game. And it was a clutch shot by Baxter. John Madry, how, what did uh, Baxter have coming into that? Nothing. No points on coming up to that last shot. Okay. Let's uh, let's go back and set that up again. Ten seconds to go in the ballgame. North Carolina was up by two points. Kenny Smith, who shoots 82.4% from the free throw line, goes to the line. I think everybody in this building expected him to make it. And here is the last shot in the ballgame. Now, this is what you were talking about, Mike. You don't know how much of that one second is really left. The ball goes in. As soon as Lebo touches it, the clock starts. And the clock expired right away. Lefty Drizel, I think, was trying to say that the ball went out of bounds right away, and therefore they should have blown the whistle, but they just didn't have time to do that. Right. If you joined us late, you've missed one of the great performances that I certainly I've seen all year, and I think Dan would concur with me, with Lenny Bias, 33 points. He's just been absolutely magnificent. Five rebounds, three assists, couple of blocks, and a steal. I mean, he has been everything. And Doherty, with 23 points, has had a great game for North Carolina. Five minutes of overtime, and right now the foul trouble that North Carolina's experiencing may be a factor. Hale gets the ball, and North Carolina will have the first crack at the basket. Now, Maryland was in his own defense for much of the end of the game. They switched to a man-to-man. -man. They're back into the man-to-man -man again. They played man-to-man -man for the last three or four minutes of the game, and they were very aggressive in it. Hale looking inside for Wolf. Of course, they always try to get it to Darty. North Carolina again, still making the hard cut, setting the good screens. Shot block at 13 seconds. Hail to Wolf. Shot won't go. They're going to call Len Bias for the foul. Looks like Bias got a shoulder in there, and that's going to be number four on Len Bias. Bias is going to swat his hand down to try to get the ball from Wolf. See, he's got his arm on Wolf, and that's where the foul was called. As Wolf leaned over, Bias had his arms on his back. Wolf's going to go to the free throw line. Wolf with 12 points tonight, 9 rebounds. And that's not a bad idea to attack Len Bias inside. You can't stop him when you're guarding him defensively, so attack him on your offensive end. You can't score very many points if he's sitting on the bench with five fouls. First free throw of the night for Wolf. Missed the second one, however, and Tom Jones with a rebound. Carolina has hurt itself with missed free throws tonight. Maryland has really gone to the well time and time again. This is Gatlin. They're always looking for Bias. They've got a double screen set down there. Bruce still can't get him the ball. Now, Bias has to be careful. A couple of his fouls have been offensive fouls tonight, and he can't afford one now. Well, Steve Hale is all over him, and Lefty Grizzell was really upset that they didn't get a foul out of that. Hale really leaning on him inside. And Lefty gives it another one of those All-American stops. Here's a loose ball steal by Lewis. He'll go in against Wolf. Dribble behind his back. Save it. Hale goes down. Or Lebo on the floor. Loose ball. Oh, oh, boy. Boy. Holy cow, what action. Kenny Smith pulled up jumper. Missed it. Gatlin rebound. That's a tough shot. Both teams right now may be a little bit out of control. A little nervous. Baxter to Jones. Jones goes baseline, puts it in. And Maryland takes the lead 71-70. What a ball game. Nobody was guarding Speedy Jones, but Jones was very good at not getting called for a charge. Hale was in position. Jones glided by. Boy, when he turned around, there was nobody there. You can see his eyes light up like it was Christmas comes early. Lebo downtown. No go. Hale with a long rebound. Lewis, 
I think, hurt himself. I think he was hurt on the play before when they had the loose ball. Somebody banged into his leg. I don't know that there's a better six foot seven inch shot blocker in the country. Watch him get up here. No, that's good block, I think. Appears so from our replay. Of course, to me, that is the that is the toughest uh, shot for me to call, even in replays. I can't tell when that silly thing comes to its apex. <laughs> I don't agree. No good at that. It's a difficult call to make, but as you say, I think it was the proper call on that particular occasion. Now, be interesting to see what's what's wrong with Lewis. If it's just a cramp and he can come back, he's certainly been a key part for the University of Maryland. And Look, now Brad uh, Darty is limping, and they're going to get him out, put Warren Martin in, so both clubs lose players at least momentarily that were playing very, very well for them. Warren Martin is in for North Carolina, and it's Terry Long in for, for Maryland. 2.51 left to go in the overtime. And let me say first overtime. I've just got a feeling. Gatlin. Guarded by Smith. This is Len Bias. Hale's on him. A hold on Bias. Missed the shot. Rebound to Levi. Great block out by Hale. Bias was going after the ball, but Hale kept him away from it. 71-70. Maryland over North Carolina. 2.29. As you see on the clock in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, we'll keep you up to date on the shot clock. Bias has to be very, very careful. He's working with four personal. This is Warren Martin a long way away from the bucket. Hale into the lane. Dumps it off. Great pass from Steve Hale. And Carolina retakes the lead at 72-71. Hale has 14 points. Great penetration by Hale. He forced Bias to come and try to stop him. Baxter fakes the shot, gets it to Bias, back to Baxter, and now Gatlin against the Carolina zone. This is Bias in the lane, double team. Got it! Lynn Bias with 35 points, and Maryland is back on top. Boy, what a game. Bias put it on the floor. Lebo knocked it away, but Bias got it back. Wolf. This is Hale. Kenny Smith is free. He'll take a second team footer. lead the basketball and 126 left. Maryland has one timeout left. North Carolina has two. And Maryland would like to take some time off the clock, but they've got to score. They can't just hold it. You want to bet Lynn Bias gets it sooner or later? Here's Hale going for the steal. Doesn't get it. Long to Gatlin. This is Baxter. Shot clock at 18. Baxter not even looking for the shot that time. Here's a whistle, and Maryland may have gotten a break because Steve Hale seems to be injured, and the officials will stop it now, Lefty for Grisell, the injury. Lefty Grizel's very angry. This is where Hale gets hurt. He goes in there, and what's he got? what he gets, I think, is a bias elbow. He may have. Maybe a knee there. As bias comes up, he may have gotten his yep. face. And Lefty Grizel... I know he's not complaining that the game was stopped because Hale was hurt, but he's saying, for crying out loud, I've got a one-point lead against the number one team in the country, and you're stopping it in the middle of my offense. <laughs> Timeout, 58 seconds left. 73-72, Maryland by one. We'll be back after this. Official timeout. The American work ethic. It's when what you do isn't a job. It's a commitment. It's working by a standard, not by a clock. It's when the toughest standards are your own. The work ethic built a nation, and today it's building an airline. Last year, Piedmont gained passengers 10 times faster than the largest airline in the country, and our service record was ranked number one. The work ethic, it's alive and well at Piedmont Airlines. Hi, Al here. Watch this. It's Weird Al's Guide to the Grammys. Learn how to shop for a limo, pick the right tuxedo, and lose gracefully. And there's more. In-depth interviews with Prince and Bruce Springsteen. And what do you think this is? I don't know. Plus sex, violence, accordion music, and everything else you've come to expect from a TV show. Don't miss it. Weird Al's Guide to the Grammys, Sunday on TV 45. 
Bias operating inside. There you see Lebo knocks the ball away. Bias is going to go up with the jump hook. He scored dunks. He scored short shots like that. He scored from 22 feet. He's right. stolen the ball. He's gotten rebounds. He's 9 for 9 from the free throw line. You can't play any better than Bias has played tonight. Another day at the office. 35 points for Len Bias. Maryland leads 73-72. Here's the story. 58 seconds left. Only 14 seconds left on the shot clock. It's very important for the Maryland players as they come back out on the court to realize that there's only 14 seconds left on the shot clock, and I'm sure they talked about that at the timeout. Now, some people might be wondering why did they stop the game. The official can stop the game anytime he wants to, and I think Hale was really hurt. Oh, and they threw it away. Doherty anticipated and picked it up. 52 seconds to go. And North Carolina will use the timeout. They will have one left. They want to talk about it. 50 seconds to go in the game. 10 seconds difference on the shot clock. I'll tell you what, Mike. It turns out that the play stopping the thing for, for Hale ends up being a big break for North Carolina. Not because the game was stopped, but because Carolina steals the inbounds. Able pass. to set up the defense. Nobody comes to Gatlin. It's like one of those deals where they say a football quarterback can't throw the ball all the way across the field. Well, that's what Gatlin was trying to do. Nobody came to the ball. Gatlin tried to throw it over the entire defense. Just too long a pass. Doherty had plenty of time to get there. Now, I'm sure some people might be wondering why the official can't stop the game. As we said, the official can stop it any time he wants to. I think in that situation the officials felt that Steve Hale was seriously hurt and needed to stop the game. Maryland was not in a transitional situation where they were going right at the basket. I think that's a good good play. And I don't think, uh, certainly Hale is not going to be standing standing there with his head down if he is not injured. No, uh, they practically had to help him off the short. Sure. 50 seconds left, each club with one timeout. Now here's the situation again. Maryland leads by one. North Carolina has 40 seconds left on the shot clock for this possession. So Maryland, even if North Carolina took all the time off, Maryland would still have one more possession. If North Carolina takes all the time off and North Carolina scores, Maryland's got 10 seconds to go down and try for the game-winning basket. Which is what they had at the end of regulation, 10 seconds to go. They used eight of those and scored on a bucket, and Steve Hale has come back into the ballgame for North Carolina. It will be Hale, Lebo, Wolf, Kenny Smith, and Doherty for Maryland. It's Baxter, Jones, Gatlin, Bias, and Derek Lewis. Now, if you're Maryland, you want to play good defense. You obviously don't want to foul and put them on the line. And Lebo for, trying to get it in, gets it into Smith. And for heaven's sakes, if they shoot and miss, you want to get the rebound. Oh, yeah. Shot clock, 10 seconds under the game clock. You've got the game clock in the corner of your screen. Carolina being very patient. Lewis is guarding Darty. Doesn't want him to get the ball. Maryland in the man-to-man. -man. This is Wolf to Kenny Smith. Shot clock at 15. Loose ball. Oh, big play there. Lebo comes up with it. Shot clock at 9. Baxter didn't see the ball. Smith trying to drive. Goes down. Bias he's got it away by Bias. Baxter picks it up. And Len Bias says, I want that ball. Bias stole the ball from Baxter. Eight seconds to go. Gatlin to Baxter and that is an intentional foul. And they're trying to foul him again. They didn't hear the whistle. And Len Bias has the biggest smile on his face you have ever seen. Now the game is not over. Look at Lefty. Lefty <laughs> is sitting there with his legs crossed. Yeah, I believe that he's that calm at this situation. Bias Look gets the that. ball. What hasn't he done tonight? Holy cow. And, and he watch gets Bias. He's going to steal this. it. Give me the ball. Seven seconds left. Keith Gatlin will go to the free throw line, a 76% shooter. This is his first trip of the night. You want pressure? This is pressure. Seven seconds to go, Maryland by one. He makes both of them. Ball game's over. But he's got to make both of them. And the crowd is up, waving its arms, something you don't see very often at Carolina, and he hits the first one. 74-72. In historical perspective, Maryland handed Dean Smith his worst loss ever at Carmichael. Lefty Grizzell's team did that by, I believe, 22 points. They are now trying to hand him their first loss ever at the Dean Smith Center. The lead is two. Gatlin makes it three, seven seconds to go. Wolf, length of the court pass. Off the backboard. That'll be out of bounds to Maryland. 
No time ran off the clock because it did not touch a player. And since the player didn't touch it inbounds, the ball is going to be out of bounds up underneath the Maryland. Now, a couple of the Maryland players were celebrating, and Lefty Grizel says, uh, came up and said, not yet. There's seven seconds left. Maryland with a game that most people literally thought they had to win to have a chance to get into the NCAA. You see the Maryland bench there in the background. There's about a side Gatlin on one of those trick inbound plays, and that's it. Maryland has knocked off North Carolina in one of the biggest upsets this year. The Terps, who were three and seven in the ACC, and there is one happy coach, Lefty Brazil. Maryland will go to 15 and 11. North Carolina 25 and 2, 9 and 2 in the ACC. The final score: Maryland 77, North Carolina 72. Dan, this was the kind of ball game where you saw Lenny Bias with an absolutely incredible effort. And Maryland with a great comeback when I think most people thought they'd be left for dead in this one. We'll be back to wrap it up from Chapel Hill right after this. Stay with us. Everyone is worried about rising medical costs. But at Pilot Life, we're doing something about them. We've developed a practical cost containment program that monitors and evaluates charges, encourages second opinions and outpatient treatment, and counsels good health maintenance. It's helping employers make significant savings without sacrificing the quality of treatment. At Pilot, we're making it less costly to get well with good sound thinking that works. If Madam Butterfly would have had an 86 Colt four-door sedan with optional turbo power, Lieutenant Pinkerton would never have gotten away. Colt, imported for Dodge and Plymouth, built by Mitsubishi in Japan. Colt, it's all the Japanese you need to know. score Maryland 77 North Carolina 72 here at the Dean Smith Center our Holly Farms players of the game are Len Bias 35 points six rebounds a great floor game for North Carolina Brad Doherty 23 points and eight rebounds Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference approved plan once again our Holly Farms players of the game are Len Bias from Maryland and Brad Doherty from North Carolina Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry we're out of time. We've got to go for all of our broadcast crew and Dan Bonner and Terry Gannon who joined us at halftime. This is Mike Patrick from Chapel Hill. So long, everybody. ACC Basketball, brought to you in part by Midas Muffler and Brake. What a play by Bias! Holy cow! Maryland does not have a timeout left in this situation. Smith could ice it here. And he missed it. Jones has to get it up. Oh, this is interesting, huh? Gatlin to Baxter. Baxter. He missed it. Two seconds left. Carolina wants timeout. Jeff Baxter, who has done virtually nothing all night long, with two seconds left, takes maybe the biggest shot of his life. A game that most people literally thought they had to win to have a chance to get to the NCAA. You see the Maryland bench there in the background. There's about a side side of Jimmy B and Gatlin just clinches the Gatlin on one of those trick inbound plays. And that's it. Maryland has knocked off North Carolina in one of the biggest upsets this year. The Terps who were three and seven in the ACC. And there is one happy coach lefty Brazil.
and Maryland coming up from Cole Fieldhouse. Remember, Georgia Tech now just one game out of the ACC lead. Maryland still going after that NCAA bid. Let's get to starting lineups right now from both ball clubs from the public address announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our starting lineup. For Georgia Tech at center, a 7 foot 231 pound senior from Brooklyn, New York, number 22, John Sally. For Maryland at center, a 6'8", 240-pound junior from Glen Allen, Virginia, number 32, Curry Long. For Georgia Tech at guard, a 6'1", 174-pound senior from Enid, Oklahoma, number 25, Mark Price. For Maryland at guard, a 6'5", 165-pound junior from Glenton, North Carolina, number 3, Keith. For Georgia Tech at guard, a 6'4", 209-pound junior from Manhattan, number 45, Bruce Dalrymple. For Maryland at guard, a 6'1", 165-pound senior from Washington, D.C., number 12, Jeff Baxter. For Georgia Tech at forward, a 6'8", 209-pound freshman from Crestview, Florida, number 20, Tom Hammond. For Maryland at forward, a 6'7", 195-pound sophomore from Temple Hill, 